But I just want to thank God for my being here. I want to give a glory and honor to the Spirit of Christ, to uh, the McKenzie, to my pastor, Bishop Robert Blunt, to our union president, our LD Von Waters, um, and to our BCS and YPHA, the president, the vice president, the superintendent, the second vice president, um, and the person who I work with on the finance team. So I am here in the, the, the other uh, people who did the previous workshops are not here, but some of what they said, I did, I'm glad I shared it with them at the table, um, discussed and kind of mentioned, touched on everything. And I think when you do have a thing, some things need to come in line. So what I'm, um, and I had to think, remember primarily this is for young people, so I made a little uh, acronym, G-I-G-O. With, and she touched on it, uh, garbage in, garbage out. You get out what you put in. And Patricia um, sent me this text to talk about giving and tithing. And when they, all the things that they talked about earlier was all about giving back to God. If it's worship, it's about us giving to God. If it's praise, it's about it giving to God. The manner in which we dress is all about giving to God. In the scripture, this is what just what was on um, my mind when I talked about garbage in, um, garbage out, is Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever, whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. For he that sow to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, and he that sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary and well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we also need to know with our giving that this is also a principle. Um, and we have to, one thing we have to remember, and I'm just, I, I was taught this and I read this for myself, that some things we do, we have to remember about our third and fourth generations. Because some things we're reaping has nothing to do with us ourselves. It could have been something our grandmothers, our previous ancestors have done. Um, and with giving, God loves a cheerful giver. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 10, it says, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which sow bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And that is within all areas that we give. It's not just in our money when we come and give our time. And some things we have to make sacrifices with our time. But God wants us to be cheerful about it um, when, when we do it. And I had to learn that. Um, one thing I had to learn personally about myself is although I'm a giver, I'm a little bit selfish with certain things. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily selfish, but I don't like to share. <laughs> I don't. I'd rather give it to you than share it with you. Some of it is my upbringing because I grew up as an only child, but I just had to learn that for myself, you know, and God was kind of helping me. Diva, some things you do have to share. And I have a child now who, what I have sometimes he thinks is his. And I have to say, that's mine. I got this, but whatever I have, he wants a piece of it. So God is just helping me um, to kind of grow in that area um, in regards to my sharing and giving. I have learned that um, it is, and the Bible says here, and I have it here in Acts 20 and 35, and it's more blessed to give than to receive. And that we need to know when we give to people, that we're also sowing into their lives. They may not be able to give anything back. And the Bible talks about that in James, where we are not to give people based upon what we can get back from them. That if, if they are poor and there is a need, it is for us to fulfill it. God is working through us here on this earth. And that is something, and, and I'm going to give you something that is, is simple. Just this morning, um, where I live at, it's, I just want to say it's a nice and right area similar to this environment. To everybody, no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, because I have to represent that light that's in me, right? I have to be God to them. And I just said good morning to him. We, it was about maybe five minutes to nine. I said good morning. And he said, oh, you seem so happy today. And I just said to him, I have to let my light shine. You know, 
But I was sowing something into him that I don't know what happened before I said good morning to him, but the point that I acknowledged him and then acknowledged his being and I just did not overlook him, for him it could be a difference in his life. It, it, it wasn't something that we say may be big, but it could be big to him, you know? So sometimes you just can't walk by um, people. One of the things also with giving, which I really love this part about giving, it's in the sermon on the mount, and this can be for everyone, for some things children, uh, when we talk about sowing and reaping, how you treat your parents, how you treat people, how you listen to your parents, it'll make a difference after a while, because you're going to have children if God allows you to live long enough, and stuff will come back to you. But the Bible tells us that when we give our alms, do not give them before, do, do not like give them before men where you're shouting it because you already have your reward. The one thing I love about it is that what you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Yes. And, and, and it's true. Because sometimes we get mad, we see what people got, but we don't know what they sold. You know, we just have to uh, trust God and, and, and believe God at his word. So what you put into people, what you put into yourself, that is what's going to um, come out as, as, as it relates to giving. Now, when Trisha, and Trisha, please correct me if, if, if I'm wrong, because when she had uh, texted me, she mentioned to me about tithing. And one thing I have learned just personally for myself is that it, it's not something I necessarily pay into, but we have to give our tithes, okay? I was taught how to, I didn't grow up in the church, so I was taught about tithing. Um, and when we get into that, it, it, it's kind of sort of like giving, but it's different also than when we offer something with that. Does anyone have any questions when I said about giving? Is <laughs> so quiet? <laughs> yes, no? Y'all just listening to what I have? I have a lot of scriptures. I'm trying not to overload you all with the scriptures that I have um, written down. But I'm going to give you a testimony. So, like I said, I'm a giver. My mother was a giver. Okay, so I saw it done. And when I got saved and got, you know, taught in the church about tithing, that it became a period of time where I did not have a full-time job. I had some money, you know, to survive, but I did not have a full-time job. For a period of about five years, just recently, early this year, I got a full-time job. So I want to testify that I never went home I got plenty of food in my house. You probably come shop in my house. Right? I was able to pay my rent on time every month. Okay? And I would hear people say this, but I didn't know it. So I wasn't working full time, and I got a brand new car. Wasn't really looking for one. I wanted something different because I had those, you know, I had a loud orange car, and I just wanted something different. And I had somebody T-bone me, and I, um, you know, my car got totaled out. But I walked up the car lot with a brand new car. It was in 2015. I got a 2016 Subaru Forester with only 30 miles on it. Amen. Right? Amen. I'm going to contribute that to me being obedient, yes. me being faithful in my giving. Amen. I really wasn't looking for it so much. But this is what God had for me. I had made every car payment. Still, my rent is still being paid. My house is still full of food. Do, do y'all understand that, that we, we, we have to sow into this and they got to take care of it? So when we get into our tithing, because some people have an issue with that. When, we, when she was talking about the dressing, but people seem to have issues with tithing. We are obligated by the word of God to tithe. We're not always obligated to give our offering, but we are obligated to tithe. And I'm going to share with you um, the first time it was mentioned is in Genesis 14 with Melchizedek. He was not Abraham yet. He was Abram. When he went to war and had to go back and get his nephew Lot, he had the first time he had given 10% to Melchizedek, who was the high priest. Um, so that was the first time it was mentioned in the Bible, okay, before the promise was necessarily even, you know, given, um, the covenant, I'm sorry. And then in Numbers 18, because sometimes I think as Christians, 
we forget about some of the things we do in the New Testament is based upon what has happened in the Old Testament. And we need to know what the Old Covenant was and the reason why we have a New Covenant. But the purpose of tithing, some may know, some may, is to take care of the house of God. <clears throat> we are to take care of the man of God or those servants of God who are serving in the house. Sometimes we look at people and we look at what they got. I'm not doing this. They got this and they got that. But remember, you reap what you sow. God told us in the Bible, we give our arms in secret, he's going to reward us openly. Right? So I don't know what that person may have sold. I don't know if they're reaping benefits from their great-grandmother or great-grandparents. Right? And I have to think about the benefits that I want to reap for myself and for the generations that follow in regards to me. But I am obligated through my tithing and the tithing is fixed. It's 10% of whatever, um, and it's proportional, right? So that means, I heard Trisha say, if I make $10, I'm supposed to give a dollar. If I make $250, I'm supposed to give 25. Some people like to get into the discussion, do I tithe off my net? Do I tithe off my gross, right? They tax off your gross. They don't tax off your net. And the tax man get what he's supposed to get. And the Bible says we are to honor the Lord um, with the first fruits of our increase. So whatever comes, we need to give it to him first. And the, and, and the obligation is, is that we take care of the house of, of God. And that is what he expected. And even when you go, and I read it again last night in, in Numbers, the Levites had to even tithe. They had to tithe the tithe that was given to them in that sense. Okay? Oh, here it is. It's in Proverbs. Wise King Solomon, who God gave him wisdom and knowledge beyond any other. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy press shall burst out with new wine. That sounds like a promise to me. I don't know what it sounds like to you, but God made a promise right there. So if I honor the Lord with my substance and the first fruits of all my increase, my barn's going to be filled. Not just filled, but filled with plenty. Okay? And we need to hold on to that, you know, because the enemy will come in and try and eat up that word that was given unto us, and we're trying to look at certain things. But we have to look at God's word and what God's word said. Y'all remember my testimony? When I told y'all I ain't have no full-time job, that I ain't never missed a payment, I wasn't ever late, got plenty of food in my house, do my son look like he missing any meals? No. no. <laughs> Do I look like I'm missing any meals? No. Okay? We, we got to look at some of these tangible things. And I got me a new car. You know, God saw fit that I should have it. I wanted something different, but God saw fit for me to have that. And, and that's how that worked out. Um, as I said, um, in regards to the difference between tithing and offering. I want to go back to something that they, when they, um, she defined it when she, when she was talking about the, the banners, the flags, right? When she defined empower, the two words I wrote down were equipped and to authorize. So if I'm empowered to give, I'm equipped. God is going to provide the seed for me to sow. With our children, even if we give them two cents, we think, oh, I ain't putting that in there. God said he'll give 60, I mean 30, 60, and 100 fold. So we have to think about, we have to give our children some seeds to sow. Also, we have to have something in what I do. This is just my personal thing. If I have $2 in my hand and I see a person, don't seem like they're getting up for the offering, I give them one of my dollars. Because I'm going to bless them, and in turn, it's going to bless me. Because you know what? I'm still sowing. That's just the practice I got into. Okay? But like I said, tithing is limited to 10%, but our offering is unlimited. Amen. I can give how much I want to, how little I want to, right? We think about that parable with that lady that had that penny, and everybody had that much. But God honored that. Because she gave out of her heart. She gave her last. Right? But that's what she wanted to do. Okay? The tithe is fulfilling an obligation to God. It requires obedience. And in 1 Samuel 15 and 23, when Saul, God told him to kill everything. And he wanted to save the good stuff for himself. 
even saved the king, right? And God asked him, is obedience, tell him obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what he wants us to be obedient. But it requires us to, you know, just let things go. It said, in the Old Testament, I had to, I'm sorry, I wrote this. The people had to bring offerings to the Lord in the form of sacrifices. We don't have to do that no more, thank God for Jesus. The burnt offering, the meat offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, and the guilt trespass offering. They had to bring it to the temple and make those sacrifices. So God did that. I mean, Jesus did that for us. These were prescribed offerings, but there were also free will offerings. Right now, we more so operate under the free will offering. When we come and we give in our mission offering, when we give for the pastor's anniversary, the church anniversary, the building fund, all of those are considered free will offerings, okay? Tithing and offering provides a way for us, the people, to make contributions of taking care of God's business. God is expecting us to take care of his business. He has equipped us. He has empowered us to do that. And that is his expectation. And when we don't, let me go back and I'm going to read this scripture that we hear a lot with tithing. And I'm going to read the entire scripture, Malachi 3, 8 through 12. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So, he's going to give us a blessing. He's going to pour it out to us that we won't have room enough to receive it. Not only is he going to do that, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So ain't nobody going to come and eat it up. So he's going to bless me with it, give me plenty, and then the devourer's not going to come and eat it up. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. So we want things to be timely and seasonally. But through my obedience, that's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Because if things happen prematurely, it's not good. Who can handle it? Who wants to handle when we buy bananas? Who eat green bananas? I'm not talking about the planting. We got to wait till they ripe. Am I right? We got to wait till it's yellow. It's a time for everything. And then it says, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And, and, and I want to say something. One of my church members, she's not there no more, and I felt a bit offended when she said it to me. Although it wasn't offensive, because I'm, I'm going to tell you all where my attitude went. But God had to deal with me with that. She looked at me and said, I know you always got money. And in my mind, why, how she know that? She don't need to be counting my money. She don't know what I got. This is what went in my mind. Then God had to deal with me and say, you are a daughter of a king. Right? I should look like a princess. People should see richness on you. Especially if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Didn't I make you promises? I only read some of them to y'all. So if I look like I always have, I'm supposed to look like I'm always had because I'm giving, I'm giving in my tithing. And, and, and this is another one I used to hear uh, Sister Price say here, that um, giving it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. So when we give, it's going to come back to us. So we have to learn these things. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with this, and it goes along with giving. But whatever God gives you to do, stewardship, God must trust you, right? And, and I'm sorry, I got something else. So I'm the treasurer for the North New Jersey Choir Court. I have worked with Sister West for some time. And sometimes I feel like I wanted to step down. And my pastor tried to shout me out last Sunday about that. I was supposed to be in a certain place to get some money. I told him I wanted to step down, you wouldn't let me. And I keep saying, God, why? Why don't nobody step up and do this, right? So one, you can't trust everybody with money. That's right. Because I do right by God with what he has given me. God is going to put me in position because I'm handling other people's stuff. Yes. You be faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many. So that's why I am believing God has not, I have not been released from that position. Right? <laughs> okay? Even though people don't feel like doing it sometimes. 
Even though I have been honest and explained to my team why I may not, and I thank you for understanding, because I was honest. I ain't trying to hide behind anything. Um, but God has a purpose. God has a purpose. So we have to be a good steward of what he entrusts to us. We have to be stewards of what is entrusted to us from God. What we have is not our own, but belongs to God, even though he earned it. Thank God he gave me life, health, and strength to go to work. Okay, because King Solomon tells us in, in, in um, Ecclesiastes also that if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. But I should also have a reward for my labor. He entrusted, to, he entrusted it to us and expects us to do what is right with it by not robbing him and not tithing his offering. So when you think, I'm not giving enough um, tests, I'm not giving them what they asked me for. You may not. You give according to what, what you have. So if they ask for 100 and you know you make that a week, maybe I need to give 10. I have to give it to the portion of what I have. Don't worry about them who talk because you ain't giving it for them. You're giving it for God. Remember what I said. What you do in secret, God going to reward you openly. So maybe sometimes you go some places. You're not coming out your pocket. That little bit of money is staying there. You go somewhere and somebody just pays for your breakfast. Somebody just pays for your food. You know, it, it could be those little things like that. And I says here, our giving is always in proportion to what God has given to us. And there are some scriptures that um, I'm going to sit down after this. I'm not going to read them, but they're in Luke chapter 12 and chapter 16 about the faithful and unfaithful servant and then the shrewd steward. But God wants us to be faithful with whatever he has entrusted to us. He wants us to be good stewards because we also have to be a model for others. And God wants to get glory in our lives so our light can shine, right? It says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works, right? And glorify who? Your Father in heaven. It's not about me. And then they may want to do it. But just as I testified to you through my obedience, you can go and do it to someone else. So that's all I have for right now. I don't know if anyone has any questions.